Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead and give praise and worship to our Heavenly Father this morning.
Let's offer up a word of prayer over the offering this morning. Father God, we're just, we thank you that we can bring this offering and every offering out of our lives to you, Father, in every way, shape, and form that we bring it. We ask that you would bless and multiply all of them around our community and around our world with the message of salvation through faith in your risen son, Jesus of Nazareth. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Do we have any big announcements this week, friends? Starting off the year, charging on into 2023, powerfully strong. Youth group starts. Youth group starts. Go team. Thank you, youth group leaders. And a little reminder, everyone who would like to show up and help out and join youth group leaders and just be part of the youth, whatever role you would like to participate in. Wednesday nights, uh, little kids at 4.30, 4. The younger kids start at four, and the older kids start at six. Right at six. The, the group starts at six thirty, I think, but the supper time starts at six. So feel free to show up and participate in that praise and worship as well. Yeah. Okay, we have um, a, a good, healthy supply of uh, NIV study Bibles, the old youth group study Bibles, and the youth group was blessed with new Bibles this year, so if you would like or know anybody who could use one of those, we have an abundance of them, so please feel free to grab one, and if the pile gets low, let us know, and we know where the stash is at in the back. So, let's go ahead and offer up another word of prayer to our Heavenly Father this morning for the message. Father God, we're just thankful that we can gather together as your children through our faith in Jesus, your risen Son, Father. And we just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would speak through my mouth this morning and guide us into walking more hand-in-hand -hand with you and hand-in-hand -hand with our faith wherever it is at in you, Father. We just thank you for your wisdom and guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, good morning again all, and uh, I think we've got a pretty healthy, good, long trail to walk here this morning, so the trail that I was thinking and meditating on for this week was seeking wisdom for helping raise that child of faith that we talked about on Christmas Eve. Here, hold this baby, remember? Am I holding my baby of faith? And not only am I holding my baby of faith, am I growing the child of faith that started off in my heart and mind the very first time that I called on Jesus of Nazareth to be my Lord and Savior. Because that is a wonderful, awesome, epic, great moment. But that's not where it stops. That's where the journey starts and the adventure starts there. And we can grow that child of faith each and every day that we get to do this. That eye springing open is another opportunity that we have to grow our faith and to walk hand in hand with our young faith and help it grow. And as it grows, it will impact not only our lives, my life, but the lives of each and every one of those around us that we come in contact with. And I think it would be just shockingly eye-opening if all the lives that our faith of each and every person sitting in here this morning, the way it's impacted the people around the community that we may not know anything about. You know, I don't know who all my faith has impacted. I know some of the people, but I don't know all of them. And so I'm grateful that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide each one of us in growing that baby of faith and helping him grow in his journey. And regardless of how long my baby of faith has been alive in my heart and my head, it, ha it can always grow more. The beauty of our faith is there's no limit to where it can grow to. There's not like a peak that, oh, hey, good job. You, you, lead, you reached A plus 4.0 level of faith. There's no 4.0 level of faith. It's just it keeps going and growing with us as we keep going and growing. And uh, 
thinking about this journey that we're on, let's begin back at the beginning of the journey of some of the faith with uh, some sons of Adam. If we drift back to Genesis chapter 5, verses 22 to 24, we read about, After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years, walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. And of all the long list of people that are listed in the genealogies in the Old Testament, Enoch is the one that doesn't list his death. He didn't die. God simply, come home, be with me, son. And the key part of this that jumped out at me, these verses, was walking in close fellowship with God. So am I doing that to grow my child of faith today? And am I encouraging those around me with walking in close fellowship with God? Because if I'm walking hand in hand with someone, pretty much everyone around the world that can see me is going to know about it, aren't they? And if, if I'm walking, if you and I are walking together and we're this distance apart, Yes, we can be traveling the same path, but we both might go these routes. And if we're walking over on the other side of the county, we might, might both be going north and eventually get to the same place, but who knows the paths that we get there. But if we're walking hand in hand together, the world around us is going to see and know who I'm walking hand in hand with. And all the stories they will tell, right? <laughs> but... Uh, these, Enoch is listed in five whole sentences in the Bible, or in Genesis here. These are the three main sentences. And that idea of just walking in close fellowship with God, close enough to not have a recorded death, that he just went to be with God forever. In close fellowship, walking hand in hand is just like a father walking down the road with his child, right? We've all seen all the fun postcard pictures of the father walking, you know, the silhouettes over the ranch entryways or whatever. The father holding hands with the kids, walking down the stroll of life. And our Heavenly Father will hold our hand if we'll choose to. But just like a little kid with his dad walking, sometimes I know my kids have pulled away from my hands. And I'm pretty sure I probably pulled away from my parents' hands at times. And, wanted to run and do my own thing. But our Heavenly Father always has his hand down, ready to say, I'm here for you, son. I'm here for you, daughter. Come to me. Let's walk. Let's continue our stroll. And uh, another one that is good to look at, I believe, is Noah. We see Noah in Genesis 6, verses 7 to 9. This is where we'll start with Noah. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, I will destroy every living thing. All the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. But Noah found favor with the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man the only blameless person living on the earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. Hand in hand. He was the one person on earth looking to God and walking hand in hand with him. And he walked close enough with God, and God loved him enough that he went ahead and shared his plans with him, what he was going to do, and also what Noah should do. And God told Noah about the flood that was coming and to build an ark and everything to do with the ark. And Genesis 6.22 tells us that so Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. Whatever his heavenly father told him, okay, it's X men in so many yards long, X so many yards wide, two of everything, even the mosquitoes, Lord, really? Okay. <laughs> And then the rain comes down. God brought about the fulfillment of what he told Noah would happen. 
and the floods happened. In Genesis 8 1, after the flood had been, after the, it had rained for 40 days, solid nonstop rain, and there was no peak of mountain left on the earth anywhere. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him in the boat. He sent a wind across the earth, and the floodwaters began to recede. God remembered the promise that he made to his child and to his children. And I see a room full of his children sitting here this morning that God's made promises to, that he can fulfill and follow through with just like he did for Noah. As God remembers his promises, sometimes he puts the exclamation point about how to remember these promises. In Genesis 9, verses 8 to 11, Technology is having fun with mm -hmm. us this morning. Then God told Noah and his sons, I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants, and with all the animals that were on the boat with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, every living creature on earth. Yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never again will floodwaters kill all living creatures. Never again will a flood destroy the earth, all of the earth. And we know that yes, floods still happen, but God promised I will never cover the entire earth and eliminate all life by water ever again. And if we continue on in Genesis 9, he's beautiful computer. <laughs> Five, five second delay. Yeah, for sure. But anyways, we're in, in verses 12 to 16. Then God said, I'm giving you a sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures for all generations to come. I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is the sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. When I send clouds over the earth, the rainbow will appear in the clouds. And I will remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures. Never again will the floodwaters destroy all life. When I see the rainbow in the clouds, I will remember the covenant between God and every living creature on earth. I mean, it was a big enough covenant that God placed himself a reminder that would show up every time. And a reminder to us that he is reminded that he will never destroy all life with the flood. As we continue on in our journey down this trail of holding hand in hand in our faith and growing our faith, we see that close connection is super important. To walk in hand in hand. Second Corinthians 5 verse 21 encourages us. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the sin, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So it is through Jesus, the Christ, that anyone can choose to walk hand in hand with God as their spiritual heavenly Father. That Jesus is the one that opened the door for us to be with God, to talk with God, to have communion and fellowship with God. Noah walked in close fellowship with God. Enoch walked in close fellowship with God. Will they say, can the world write books later on and say, Dan walked in close fellowship with God? You know, that's something that I can remember each morning that I wake up. And each night before I go to bed, as I analyze my day and see how the day went, what happened in this last sun, sunshiny time, did I walk closely in fellowship with God? In Isaiah 41, verse 10, as we're walking with God, he encourages us, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. This idea of thinking about hands, 
God's right hand is victorious. Everywhere it goes, everywhere it touches and leads, he brings victory. So I think I want to be holding on to the one who has that right hand. Whether I'm on the left hand or the right hand, as long as I'm connected with God, holding hands with him and walking in that path. And if I'm holding hands with God, I'm growing that baby of faith in my life. So that through the journey, when I come across something that, you know, it might just be a, a small little anthill. Oh, yep, we can hop over this anthill, no problem. And I've heard stories about how you hopped over this anthill through faith, so I can hop over my anthill through faith. But then, as I'm going through life and walking hand in hand, growing my faith, <clears throat> some of us have heard stories from enough people that as we're walking along, it's not an anthill that we run into, it's a mountain. It seems like a very huge, large, giant mountain standing in front of us. But we're encouraged with that promise that a faith as small as a mustard seed can remove that mountain and conquer getting over that mountain as need be. And just you know, thinking about God's promise to us here about not being afraid and encouraging us that he is our God, how important is it to God to walk hand in hand with you, or with me, with any of us? In Isaiah 49, verses 15 to 16, speaking of Jerusalem here, but I believe it applies to all of us as well. Never can a mother forget her nursing child. Never. Sorry. Rewind. Isaiah 49, verses 15 to 16. Never. Can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? But even if that were possible, I would not forget you. See, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. Always in my mind is a picture of Jerusalem's walls and ruins. The idea of some, something being important, someone being important enough have their name written on the palm of God's hand. And then him extending that palm of his hand down to that person to say, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to have fellowship with you. Let's walk together, my son. Let's walk together and enjoy this journey of life that you have, daughter. You are created in my image so that we can walk together. And Jesus in Revelation 3, verses 19 to 20, reminds and encourages us, I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Walking hand in hand with someone, we can go to the table with our Lord and Savior and enjoy a meal, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and growing our faith in God in that time of prayer, in that time of meditation, in that time of study, whatever the Holy Spirit leads and guides us to do to grow our child of faith. If, he, if the Holy Spirit leads us to say, okay, at the start of the year, let's spend a time in fasting and you know, laying the flesh aside in that way and enjoying a time of growth for the spirit. Or, you know, let's make sure we pray, spend time together, fellowship and prayer and in meditation with me each morning, child. And it's important for me to remember, it's, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit will bring up one point three or four different times in three or four different ways for the message each Sunday, a lot of the Sundays. But I have to remember that whichever child I be, by thinking about them and their promises and how the promises have come true in my life and in others' lives, whichever child I be, that will be the child that wins the fight for the day. The idea of two dogs. If we have two dogs, you know, the, the idea of two dogs going against each other, whichever dog you feed more, that's the dog that's going to win the fight. Am I feeding the child of faith inside me? Or am I feeding the child of doubt and security and, you know, uneasiness? 
or am I feed, feeding that child of, I have faith that he is the God who raises the dead that can, can conquer anything in the world, that he created everything in this world. So therefore, God, I'm giving you this situation, this life, this relationship, this whatever it is, I'm laying it at your feet, Father, and I'm trusting you. To successfully help the child of our faith in Jesus, we have the opportunity to be led by the Spirit of God. In Romans 8, verse 14, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So spending time with the Holy Spirit and meditating on what he shows and educates me with, I can become and grow in being a child of God. And my faith can grow in being a faith of a child of God. And our Lord's support for this idea of walking hand in hand together with us and growing our faith. In John 10, verses 27 to 30. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. So, no one can snatch us in our faith in Jesus through the, from the Father's hand. We get to walk hand in hand with our Heavenly Father. And hand in hand with God, through my life, or through the life my Lord Jesus provides, I can remember and question, will I love God as my Father? And not just for who I believe that He should be in both mine and others' lives. You know, sometimes we have an idea of, this is who God should be. And I love that, who God should be. But will I love him for who he really is at this moment, this day in the time of the present, in others' lives, as well as in my own life? That's something I can try to remember each day. God, I want to live in fellowship with you and love you for who you are right now. Not for who I believe you should be or who I believe you should be in the future, but right now in this moment in time, I love you for who you are as my spiritual heavenly father and my creator. In 1 John 2, verses 24 to 25, we are encouraged. So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And in this fellowship, we enjoy the eternal life He promised us. And one way I can trust I help my child of faith grow is through the blessing of communion that we get to share and partaking of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior. The Apostle Paul encourages us to examine our hearts before we receive communion. So let's do that right now in a moment of prayer together. And Father, we come before you now and ask, is there anything right now not right between you and us in any way? And Lord, right now I thank you that you have forgiven my sins and the sins of these, my friends, your children. Also, we look to our relationships with our fellow man, Father. And if we have wronged anyone, we ask that they would forgive us and show us that we might be able to make it right, if possible. And for anyone who has wronged us, we ask that you would forgive them right now as we forgive them in our hearts and our minds. And we look up with humble gratitude for the gift you have given us, salvation through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. And finally, we ask to help us look forward and how to share this gift with those around us and around the world. And Father, we now ask that you would make this cup 
and this bread, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Likewise, he took the cup after he'd supped and said, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you recall our Lord's death until he comes again. You'll come up and receive someone's body from Kenny, and I will have the cup here for us, and we will each take, uh, we'll maybe go. We'll all partake, grab our, gather our Officers. cup and our bread, and we'll, because we're coming down the road. We'll all partake together. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, friends. Those we get. And now we're back on here. As we get ready to charge into this fun new 2023 year, fresh and revived and ready to walk hand in hand. Do we have any people that we'd like to lift up? People, places, things? The family of Beth Lyons. Yes, Beth Lyons family. now that got hurt. Um, 
that his, his life will continue to, to heal and get back to normal. Yes. Football players go nationally and anyone else who's in that situation like him. Yep. My sister Shai, she had a brain wave in the hospital that happened. Okay. Shy for recovery from brain situation. Continue praying for my Kamal. I don't know where I read this this week, but I read it somewhere that it says in the Bible 365 times, do not be afraid, do not fear. And as we're heading into this new year, there's always uncertainties. Huh? And that, that was in, I mean, I know that, but yet that was an extreme comfort Amen. to me that there's one for every day of the year. Yep. Amen. Leroy Guptill. Okay. Kyle was? Okay. My niece, Kyle Watson, recovery for her knee. She can stay strong playing for West Virginia. Yes, that would be very correct. You were accurate. <laughs> so, preemptive birthdays and gatherings and... Okay, Jerry Strickle, keep her lifted up for recovery. Let's lift up these praises and prayers to our Heavenly Father together this morning. Father God, we just come before you with grateful hearts, grateful hearts first and foremost. We just thank you so much for the 31st of the great-grandkids for Betty, Sloan Maxine, Father. And we just ask that your Holy Spirit would flood around their family with the joy and the celebration of life. And you would guide Sloan Maxine into the into the path and the journey that you've created her and brought her onto earth for, that she could enjoy this awesome life that you've, she's been blessed with. Father, we give you thanks and praise for three months cancer-free. Praise God. Thank you that that can, that, that it will be just the beginning of a great cancer-free journey. Father, we thank you for this. And we just also uh, would like to lay before, before you the requests for Restoration and recovery so that more praises can come to you, Father. For uh, for Jerry Sturkle, that she could recover well from the COVID. For 
Kaya Watson that her body can stay structurally healthy, functioning well, playing basketball down there and having fun. And for Shai, we ask for doctoral wisdom and guidance and for recovery to flood over her body with the brain bleed situation. And also uh, for my kicks, for full and complete restoration for health and wellness for him through this path and journey that he's on, as well as for Bill Hines, just continued full health restoration. Father, we just thank you for lift up. Thank you for Wayne and Donna, Donna Bond being back here with us and just thank you for continued re recovery and restoration for them, Father. As well as for John and Sheila Patel and Carol Bussinger. And Father, we, the football player that was injured, that uh, we just ask that you would continue with his re restoration and recovery. And we thank you that tragedies like that are able to bring the light of walking in fellowship with you back into our national eyes of the nation. We pray that we will become a God-fearing and God-honoring nation in light of situations like that. And Father, we lift up Leroy Guptill, and you know everything with his situation, Father. We just ask that your hand would be involved with him and cover over him and all over his family, Father, and all those helping him. We lift up the Beth Lyons family and ask for peace and comfort through this time for them, Father. We also lift up before you Bob and Missy Barkley and just ask for peace and provision for the mission work that they do in Paraguay, Father. And we would lift up all of the medical personnel, the military and the first responders providing their services for us that we could live safely and healthy and well in our nation and around the world, wherever we are at, wherever they are serving. We ask for wisdom, guidance, and safety for each one of them as they provide their services. We ask for safety and wisdom and peace for everyone involved with the school systems, the teachers and the kids, that each one of them can grow in their journey of education. And Father God, we just thank you for the, the beautiful, soft, gentle moisture we got last week that came down. We thank you for continued moisture that will come down soft and gentle and the moisture that goes into the ground and brings forth life in this coming year of 2023. Thank you for all these things in Jesus' name with the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace, friends. Grace and peace. <laughs>